Hello everyone, and welcome back to Psychoanalysis. I'm the Psychoanalyst, and today's subject is Percy Wetmore from Stephen King's The Green Mile. Before we begin, I would just like to say that I am not a licensed psychologist, and therefore my opinion should not be taken as such. Stephen King's novel presents a rich tapestry of characters, each representing various aspects of humanity. Among them, Percy Wetmore emerges as a significant character whose evil qualities stand in stark contrast to both the inmates and the other guards. This video aims to analyze Percy's personality, as well as his actions and role in the story. Percy comes from a family that has connections to influential people, suggesting a level of entitlement and privilege that shapes his worldview. His uncle was the governor of Louisiana, which held even more water then than it does today. This upbringing may have contributed to his inflated sense of self-importance, his belief that rules do not apply to him, and his manipulative tendencies. Despite his apparent advantages, Percy lacks the necessary skills and experience for the job. He is unprepared for the challenges of working on death row, and shows a lack of understanding and empathy towards the inmates. This lack of empathy and his sadistic tendencies become apparent as the story progresses, highlighting the darkness within him. While the novel does not provide an extensive backstory for Percy, the limited information provided suggests that he is a product of his environment. His entitlement and lack of empathy may have been fostered by the privileges he enjoyed and the lack of consequences for his actions. His entry into Cold Mountain Penitentiary serves as a catalyst, exposing his true nature and providing a glimpse into the potential dangers of unchecked power. It is suggested in conversations between other characters in the book and film that Percy only came to the Green Mile in the first place for the express purpose of watching someone fry an old Sparky, which has many implications in itself as far as Percy's psychology goes. Percy Wetmore embodies a distinct brand of evil in the story, exhibiting sadism, entitlement, and a lack of empathy. His sadistic nature is demonstrated through his enjoyment of inflicting pain on others, relishing in the power he holds as a prison guard. He is also a coward, clearly shown in his paralyzing fear of Wild Bill. In contrast, the inmates, despite their crimes, often display remorse, vulnerability, and humanity, emphasizing the stark contrast between Percy's cruelty and their potential for redemption. In comparison to the other guards, Percy stands out as an anomaly. The other guards, including Paul Edgecombe, Brutus Howell, Harry Terwilliger, and Dean Stanton, demonstrate compassion, empathy, and a commitment to justice. They understand the moral implications of their roles and strive to maintain a balance between authority and empathy. Percy, however, exhibits an entitlement that sets him apart. He believes this position grants him the right to abuse his authority and manipulate the system, showcasing a lack of moral integrity and an absence of compassion. While it is challenging to diagnose a fictional character, Percy Wetmore's behavior suggests severe potential psychopathological elements. One possibility is the presence of Antisocial Personality Disorder, or ASPD, characterized by a disregard for the rights of others, a lack of empathy, and a tendency toward manipulation and aggression. Percy's lack of remorse for his actions and his willingness to harm others without guilt align with some aspects of ASPD. Additionally, his sadistic enjoyment of causing suffering further supports this possibility. Another potential psychopathological aspect is a superiority complex, or narcissistic personality disorder, or MPD. Percy's inflated sense of self-importance, entitlement, and desire for admiration align with MPD's traits. His belief that rules do not apply to him and his exploitation of others for personal gain are consistent with the manipulative tendencies associated with MPD. Percy Wetmore represents more than just an individual character. He symbolizes institutional corruption, and the powers it poses to society. His actions and behavior epitomize the perversion of power and the potential for individuals to exploit their positions for personal gain. By contrasting Percy's malevolence with the other guard's commitment to justice, King highlights the importance of ethical conduct and the potential consequences when power falls into the wrong hands. Percy's character serves as a commentary on the broader issue of corruption within the criminal justice system. Through his presence, King raises questions about the integrity of the system itself and the responsibility of individuals within it to uphold justice. Percy's manipulation and abuse of power stand as a cautionary tale, reminding readers of the dangers of unchecked authority and the need for moral accountability. 
The scene where John Coffey releases the swarm of gnats into Percy Wetmore is a pivotal moment that carries significant symbolism and thematic depth. The act of releasing the gnats serves as a form of poetic justice enacted by John Coffey against Percy. Throughout the story, Percy symbolizes the embodiment of cruelty, sadism, and abuse of power. His treatment of the inmates and his disregard for their humanity makes him a compelling antagonist. John Coffey, on the other hand, represents compassion, empathy, and a supernatural ability to heal others. By releasing the gnats onto Percy, John metaphorically transfers the burden of suffering and pain that Percy has inflicted onto others. The gnats, typically associated with annoyance and discomfort, become agents of retribution. This act can be seen as a manifestation of John's powers being used to balance the scales of justice and to expose Percy to the torment he has so callously caused others. Additionally, the swarm of gnats can be interpreted as a physical manifestation of the hidden evil within Percy. It is as if John's actions allow the darkness within Percy's soul to become visible and tangible. The gnats serve as a metaphor for the consequences of Percy's actions, illustrating the notion that one's deed will eventually catch up with them. The release of the gnats also represents the power of the oppressed to fight back against their oppressors. The inmates on death row, whom Percy has tormented and mistreated, are represented by the gnats seeking their own form of justice. John Coffey acts as their conduit, an instrument of their retribution, highlighting the concept that even the powerless can find ways to reclaim their agency and challenge the forces that oppress them. Furthermore, the scene reinforces the themes of good versus evil and the consequences of one's actions. Percy's sadistic nature and lack of empathy lead to his own downfall as he becomes the victim of the very torment he has inflicted on others. The scene serves as a powerful reminder that evil acts, no matter how hidden or justified they may seem, have repercussions that cannot be escaped. In the end, Percy is on the receiving end of some sort of natural or supernatural justice. In conclusion, Percy Wetmore is essentially the true embodiment of evil in the Green Mile, showcasing a range of malicious qualities that contribute to his role as a captivating antagonist. His sadism, entitlement, and lack of empathy paint a disturbing picture of a man corrupted by power and devoid of compassion. Through Percy's character, Stephen King raises important questions about the nature of evil and the impact that it can have on individuals and society as a whole. As readers and viewers, we are left to reflect on the consequences of such malevolence and the importance of empathy in the face of darkness. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Psychoanalysis, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and leave a comment below on who you'd like to see me analyze in my next episode. Until next time, goodbye friends.